Let's look at a couple of case studies to illustrate our points about counter. Stimulus affects abilities. The Chardon High School shooting is an example of how distraction or countering was effective. On February 27, 2012, Chardon High School, Chardon, Ohio, football coach Frank Hall made a decision to take action and he saved an untold number of lives when an active school shooter took an assembly of children by surprise. Three students were killed and three more were wounded when 17-year-old Chardon High School student T.J. Lane entered the school's cafeteria at 7.32 Eastern Standard Time armed with a 22 caliber handgun and began shooting. Coach Frank Hall was on cafeteria duty when the gunfire erupted. Frank Hall recalls the horrific events of that day in an interview with CBS News correspondent Scott Pelley, which aired on 60 Minutes on February 23, 2014. Frank, during his interview, said, I saw a young man firing into a crowd. I just stood up, shoved my table out of the way, and started after him. He raises his weapon at me. I jumped behind a Pepsi machine. I hear another fire. That bullet missed Frank Hall. So he continued chasing the student down the corridor. Frank Hall further describes the chaos by stating, And he sees me, and he takes off down the hallway, so I chase after him again, screaming and yelling. Kids are still running. And I get to with like six, seven, eight feet of him, and there was a young man at the end of the hallway right in front of the doors, Nick Walczak, and TJ shoots him in the back. Thankfully, Nick survived that shooting. TJ Lane, still being pursued by Frank Hall, ran out the door without loading the second magazine that he carried with 10 more rounds. Frank Hall chased Lane out of the doors and into the parking lot where he lost sight of him. What did Frank Hall do that caused an OODA loop disruption? He ran at the shooter. He shouted. He resisted. He threw the plan off and chased the shooter out of the school and away from the concentration of students. The entire incident, from the first shot being fired until Frank Hall chased Lane out of the school, was a mere 47 seconds. Waiting for the police? The average police response time for an active shooter event could easily fall anywhere within the range of 2 to 10 minutes depending on a wide range of variables that include recognition of an incident through sensory perception, someone calling 911, the dispatching delay, and the officer's actual response time and entry into the school. Our key points from the Chardon, Ohio incident are, number one, distraction resulted in opportunity for students to evacuate from the cafeteria. Number two, distraction reduced the potential number of injuries, creating opportunities to flee and lock down. Number three, disruption caused shooter to lose focus and he did not reload the gun. And number four, the unexpected stimulus from coach drew the shooter away from the concentration of students. There are many other cases where the strategies discussed throughout this course have worked to save lives and reduce injuries. Here are just a few examples. Red Lake High School, March 21, 2005, student Jeff Weiss killed nine before committing suicide. A school lockdown had been initiated. It was a traditional passive lockdown. Weiss walked about the hallways of the school and kicked open locked doors and broke windows in order to shoot teachers and students who were huddled together in clusters hiding behind bookcases, chairs, and desks. In one particular classroom, a 16-year-old student and varsity football player, Jeffrey May, decided to rush Weiss. He attempted to wrestle Weiss and stabbed him in the stomach with a pencil. May's diversion allowed students to flee the classroom to safety. This case illustrates the importance of doing more than simply locking classroom doors during an active threat. It also emphasizes the need to spread out around the room and avoid clustering of people and arming themselves with items of potential opportunity that can be used as a last resort of self-defense. Our key lessons learned in the Red Lake incident, number one, reinforces need to lock down and fortify with a barricade. Number two, avoid clustering passively. Number three, arm yourself with objects of opportunity. Number four, prepare to defend yourself as a last resort. Number five, stimulus affects abilities, distractions. Number six, distraction yielded an escape opportunity. Sandy Hook Elementary School, December 14, 2012. 20 students and six teachers lost their lives. Six-year-old Jesse Lewis yelled for his classmates to run when Adam Lanza burst into the classroom and shot their teacher, Mrs. Soto. As Lanza reloaded, 11 children made it outside to safety and survived. Virginia Tech, April 16, 2008. 32 people lost their lives and 25 more were injured. Post-incident analysis revealed that casualties were high in rooms where the door was locked and students clustered or lied passively on the floor. Casualties were less in rooms where people barricaded themselves inside and or evacuated through another door or window.